every company, every business out there is eventually going to become a real-time business. But, uh, you know, they are slowly realizing that. Um, I mean, if you fundamentally look at how data is created, data is never created in batches. So and the reason why we were actually processing data in batches was because the technology was not available. And right now it's, it's a good time because the technology is there to actually process real-time data. Hi, this is your host, Sapin Bhartia, and welcome to TFL Let's Talk. And today we have with us Manish Devgan, Chief Product Officer at Hazelcast. Manish, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you, Sapnil. Good to be here. Yeah, it's my pleasure to host you. And today we are going to talk about the maturity model of steam processing. Before we deep dive into this topic, uh, we folks, of course, we have covered you folks earlier, but it's very good to just remind our viewers what is Hazelcast all about. So talk about the company. Yeah, thanks, Swapnil. So Hazelcast is uh, uh, a platform company. We, we have a unified data platform, which uh, allows you to uh, leverage real-time data uh, from both storage and, and compute and streaming analytics perspective. Uh, we basically are the platform uh, based on which real-time applications are built. Uh, and uh, some of these applications involve, you know, we, we actually operate in various verticals, uh, including financial services, retail, uh, banking. Uh, and a lot of the real-time applications are centered around opportunities and threats, uh, you know, which, which businesses can, uh, can work on. When we say stream processing, what does it exactly mean? So, Apnil, I always think about it from a business perspective. So I'll give you a little idea uh, on, so let, let's uh, talk about the, the customers and what it means to their business. So when I look at, uh, let's look at our customer base. So we have, um, you know, from retail like Domino's and Target, uh, we have uh, big financial services like Deutsche Bank, BNP Paribas, um, you know, other brands like Volvo, Nissan, so these these customers are essentially trying to leverage data, right, and derive the most value from data. And what we have realized with the customers is that um, the value of these insights actually perish over time. So you know, the longer you wait, the less valuable they get. So from a business perspective, you know, these companies are trying to uh, you know improve customer experience. And how do you use how do you improve customer experience? You know, a lot of the retailers, for example, look at customer experience from how can I provide a hyper personalized um, kind of experience to the retailer? So let's say you are you're transacting at, at Target and, you know, is there a real time offer I could present to you because you were looking at sweaters, for example. So so basically they're trying to figure out how do you uh, generate more opportunities for the business? How do you you know, there's a lot of things about cart abandonment even when you're actually um, buying online a lot of times you you forget to complete your order because you got you got distracted but like you know this is the age of distraction right with with all the mobile devices so how these businesses are trying to figure out how do i leverage the most value of data and guess what the most value of data is actually generated in real time so being able to leverage data both in motion and data at rest so this might be historical information and generate the most value. And the most value comes from, from data which is in motion. So that's where streaming comes into play. And as, as we all know, you know, data is not created in batches. It's actually streaming in. So that's, that's kind of the, the value behind stream processing and how can I process real-time streams and provide that hyper-personalized experience or how can I improve a product service like in banking or how do I counter threats like fraud detection, for example. So it's all about processing streams of data. And when we look at real-time data, uh, is real-time data going to be the kind of future or successor of data? Or there are certain industries because not every industry, every use case is generating real time. As you gave some examples, it could be, you know, your your Uber, it could be your food delivery. It could be, there are certain industries that do rely on real-time. But what I understand is that are there specific industries, use cases where real-time data is going to be relevant or is going to be the future of so does that question make sense yeah yeah so thanks thanks for that i mean um, real time uh, we, we are living in a real time economy i mean look at the customer expectations right uh, when you order your uber you want it to be there in 10 minutes not not 10 hours right so the customer expectation has fundamentally changed and a lot of businesses have realized that and uh, historically 
you know, the, the FANG companies are the companies who are actually leveraging real-time data, right? And, but now, um, because of, um, you know, the onset of the, the value, the opportunities and the threats, um, the other rest of the industry is kind of catching up. Um, and, uh, you know, we fundamentally believe that um, every, every company, every business out there is eventually going to become a real-time business. But, uh, you know, they are slowly realizing that. Um, I mean, if you fundamentally look at how data is created, data is never created in batches. So and the reason why we were actually processing data in batches was because the technology was not available. And right now it's it's a good time because the technology is there to actually process real-time data. I mean, just imagine when when you go about your day, you go grocery shopping, then you go fill gas in your car, and then you do another transaction. You know, that credit card company does not look at all those transactions at the end of the day, right? There's value, very little value left. So when you are at a grocery store shopping, what if they were able to actually generate a real-time offer and give you today? So it's basically seizing the moment and generating more opportunities for you. And on the threat side, it is fraud, right? There's a, there's a rampant fraud uh, in, in financial services, and they you know that needs to be countered. And that can only be countered when you're looking at data as it is created. I also want to talk about the security here uh, because data is the real asset. Applications can come and go. When it comes to real-time data or streaming data, uh, what does security mean for it? Yeah, so security is very, very important. I mean, when we work with um, uh, our customers and most of the applications where we get deployed in are what we call tier one applications. So these are applications which are mission critical. Uh, these applications might be things like fraud detection, countering uh, countering fraud, or it could be generating that real-time offer. So these are, these are generating revenue and also preventing from threats, right? So because we are mostly handling customer data or transactional data, security is of paramount importance. So the platform inherently supports everything from you know, transport level security to authentication to authorization and all that. But what we are also beginning to see is that, you know, that is not enough because with the advent of AI and off the shelf tools where you can actually, um, you know, um, uh, uh, mimic somebody, if there is a voice level authentication, you can actually mimic somebody, right? Uh, so you basically, we are basically in a catch up game, right? So how can you actually use AI and ML models to actually predict the outcome. So a lot of times security, especially in fraud detection use cases, um, security, the, the, the fraud uh, threats are countered not just because this transaction is more than $50, but it, it's because of the real-time features which these predictive models are able to seek. And it, it has to happen in that moment. So basically you are able to detect fraud before the person leaves Best Buy with the TV, right? So, so it's, that, it's, it's that in the moment. And I think security is very, very important because, um, because of, uh, you know, because of the, the uh, damage it can have uh, to the business, to the, to the person, the credit history and all that. But more importantly, now there are tools available to be able to act in that moment. Since you mentioned uh, AI, I, I mean, these days the hottest uh topic of technology is generative AI, you know, chat GPT. Uh, I mean, you folks have been leveraging AI for a long time and it kind of became boring, but uh, generative AI kind of brought the interest back in AI. Uh, talk a bit about what kind of scope do you see of generative AI in streaming real-time data or for Hazelcast? You know, in our uh, customer base, uh, you know, especially in the fraud detection space in the financial services, um, they are they are very hyper focused on the tools which are now available off the shelf tool as I was especially the gen gen AI tools where you can actually create or generate data right um, now the way what we have seen how generative AI has actually come into play is that we actually our customers can actually use gen AI to create what is called synthetic data and we are actually working with a partner of ours. Uh, where you can actually create synthetic data to kind of mimic. So let's say a predictive model can only be so accurate based on, you know, what data it's been trained on, right? So uh, using generative AI, you can actually have synthetic data which can train the model for better accuracy, 
because after all you're you're countering you know a set of tools which are created by generative ai and i think uh, you know the chat gpt and the tools like chat gpt have really shown the power of um, of of gen ai and actually brought focus into core ai what i call predictive ai and predictive ai has been in use for many many years it just takes it to another level where you can actually have um, you know synthetic synthetic uh, data be created and and make your predictive ai model so much more accurate how much adoption you are seeing of streaming real time data in the market where you are like happy that you know what the industries that as you said you know that kind of seems to be the future but you're like happy or you feel like a lot of education uh, awareness uh, drives have to be done to actually tell companies that no you should uh, move migrate to real time streaming data i think a uh, great question for apnel actually we 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 discuss this quite often with our customers and internally as well um there is definitely a shift but we also uh, realize that not everybody is that you know far in the journey of becoming a real time business and as customers realize that there is so much opportunity to be had or so much of threat to be countered using um, real time data platforms like hazelcast you know they they get on that journey quickly but then there are customers who are struggling with you know i have a system already how do i bring in without ripping and replacing bring in this new technology to give me this more you know a better uh position in the in the market or be able to counter my compar- uh, competitors so we are very conscious of that in fact one of our large customers um had a system in place already so they were actually already taking data and pushing that into a data lake uh through um you know through um system based built on uh, ibm and q and and kafka and we are able to actually help these customers kind of almost like uh, plug in these new capabilities so that they can start to see the power of uh, the, the the real time uh, real time data so it's not like a rip and replace but it also depends on where the customers are starting their journey from typically what we see is the customers are first they want to collect all the data and move data from whatever event streams they are getting transactions and uh, and customer information and what not and they push that into a data lake for future analytics that's that's the one step of the journey and then they realize yeah we i need to analyze the data but that is all delayed action you would analyze the data and then make an action hey i want to do a price increase or i want to do xyz right but as they move from being able to take real time action then they really start to look at platforms like hazelcast or other technologies where they can actually process incoming streams so it's it's really a journey uh and i think uh, it's a lot uh, from vendors like us um uh, you know and people like you to kind of educate the market on what's possible what's the art of the possible how does a company know that they are ideal candidate for real time data streaming data or that real time streaming data is ideal for them and once they do uh, recognize that what is your advice how they should approach it it does dealing with real time streaming processing different from a static or whatever the term you use for data uh, talk about that aspect there are two questions bundled together we talk about this world of batch and the batch and the world of streaming right and um, uh, if you're already doing batch you 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 probably are already collecting a lot of this real time data but you're putting that into let's say a data lake or a data warehouse now um the actions you take are delayed right you look at reports you look at models you have trained and it it probably will be few hours to to a few days now if you kind of open up your mind and think think what is possible right um the 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 possibility of actually taking immediate action on something which happened in your system you know that's when people you know eyes glow up because you know what if i have a customer who was actually transacting at an atm uh, atm machine and as they are transacting i'm actually able to create a real time loan offer based on their 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 credit history the 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 transaction they are making and we have seen like one of the customers we have been be part of they are actually able to uh, successfully increase their loan origination by 400% because they are actually catching the customer right in the moment so it's about in the moment how can i better that experience 
right? Because that that that's a big thing, and it's it's always seizing the moment. Can you seize the moment? Because as you know, you know our attention span span these days is ever decreasing and shrinking. So uh, so there's there's a lot of opportunity there. So you know, I really advise uh, the the customer CIOs and CTOs I meet that you know the art of the possible for moving into a real time business is it's real. Right. And as you know, customers kind of embark on their real time streaming data journey. Uh, can you also advise what kind of tech stack they should start building, how they should prepare themselves from technology point of view uh, to start leveraging streaming real time data? The real time applications which get built on our platform and the, and the customers we have, uh, we have figured out that there are some key ingredients to the tech stack which are important while building a real-time application. You know, one of the big things is real-time messaging. So first of all, you need to figure out the, the really plumbing on messaging, right? On, on how to capture and ingest data. And then the other big ingredient is, can I actually have a real-time data, data store? You know, data stores which are not uh, bottlenecked by disk-based databases. So these are, uh, you know, data stores which are very fast. So can I get a query back in, let's say, two milliseconds or 10 milliseconds, you know, that level of uh, real-time data management. And then stream processing is a key thing. Can I process streams as they are coming in? Not only after they are stored in a data store, but as they are coming in, right? And then the other big ingredient is real-time machine learning. This is fundamentally changes the value of, of use cases we have seen because can I actually predict in real time whether this transaction is fraudulent or not? Or can I actually effectively create a real-time offer? And that means having access to real-time feature stores, real-time features based on which the machine learning models operate. So these are the few ingredients which are very important to have in the tech stack. And as we talk about tech, you know, whole stack, I also want to talk about people and cultural aspect. Do companies also need to have cultural or mindset changes as well so that their team are once again looking at streaming data from different perspective versus you're like, no, this is not an area where we need a DevOps-like movement. Yeah, no, so Apnil, that's, that's very key. In fact, uh, mindset is something which is so important while, while changing your business. Uh, and that's key to success, right? I mean, there are technologies and tools which are plenty in the market that you can you can adopt, you can stitch them together or you know go for a consolidated platform like Cablecast. But I think it's a it's a it's a mindset shift. Uh, and the shift is between batch and real time. So just imagine the data is created in real time. So why are you processing the data in batches or micro batches, right? That's a fundamental shift. We always wanted to collect data and store that in a data warehouse so that we could run a report or train a model in the future. You know, those use cases are there, but the the world is moving to an automated world, right? Where I want to take an action as soon as something happens, right? So as soon as my car actually is beginning to skid, the automatic, the uh, the ABS system kicks in and your anti-lock brakes kick in, right? That's real time, right? So there are there are things in our world which are real time. So why shouldn't businesses be real time? Right. I think that's a fundamental mind shift that, you know, I don't want to collect the data so that I can process that tomorrow and run an analytics report and then change my business. I can actually I take an action right now. So that's a mindset shift. And the shift is, is actually very, very important because now there are tools in the market which can help you get on to becoming a real time business. Manish, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, not like talk about Hazelcast, but also real-time stream data as well. And I would love to chat with you again, because as we see, there is a lot of need for education in the market. And, you know, that's where we can, you know, really collaborate and help you folks as well and help the whole ecosystem. But I really, 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 you know, appreciate your uh, insights today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sapna. 